Welcome to our exploration of mercantilism, a pivotal economic theory from the 16th century. Mercantilism gauged a nation's wealth by its reserves of gold and silver, setting the stage for centuries of economic thought. In this documentary, we'll delve into mercantilism's roots, unravel its principles, and trace its impact on global trade. We start our journey by examining the historical context of mercantilism. In an era marked by rapid exploration and colonial expansion, European nations sought to amass wealth and power. The theory of mercantilism emerged as a strategy to bolster national strength by hoarding precious metals and maintaining a favorable balance of trade. Gold and silver weren't just currencies, they were symbols of a nation's economic might. Understanding mercantilism's significance helps illuminate the economic policies of the time and the global dynamics it shaped. This exploration not only provides a historical lens, but also a foundation for comparing mercantilism with other economic theories. Join us as we unravel the complexities of mercantilism, shedding light on how it transformed economies and laid the groundwork for modern economic thoughts. Next, we'll uncover the core principles that defined mercantilism and, in turn, drove its widespread adoption across Europe. In this segment, we delve into the core principles of mercantilism, setting the stage for a deeper understanding of its impact. At its foundation, mercantilism emphasizes the importance of a positive trade balance, meaning a nation should export more than it imports, accumulating wealth primarily through gold and silver reserves. This balance was seen as vital to national prosperity and economic stability. Mercantilism also advocates for strong government control over the economy. Governments would implement policies designed to protect and promote domestic industries, often through tariffs, subsidies, and the restriction of foreign goods. By doing so, they aim to ensure that the benefits of trade and the wealth generated remained within their borders. Central to these principles is the idea that national strength could be measured by economic success. The more wealth a country amassed, the more powerful it became on the international stage, often leading to competitive and sometimes aggressive international relations. The belief in a favorable trade balance drove nations to acquire colonies, which were viewed as essential sources of raw materials and markets for manufactured goods. Colonies were restricted in their trade, often only allowed to trade with their mother country, reinforcing the mercantilist strategy. As we move forward, you'll see how these core principles were put into practice, transforming not just economies but entire societies. We'll explore historical examples where mercantilism was successfully implemented and where it faced challenges, setting the stage for later economic theories. Stay with us as we uncover the intricacies of mercantilism and its enduring legacy in shaping economic thought and history. Mercantilism wasn't just an abstract theory. It was a practical blueprint that shaped entire nations. Take, for instance, the colonial policies of the 16th and 17th centuries. European powers extended their reach, establishing colonies across the globe. Through these colonies, mercantilist principles came to life. Monopolies were granted to favored companies, restricting trade to ensure a favorable balance of exports over imports. The aim was simple, accumulate wealth in the form of precious metals, primarily gold and silver. One glaring example of mercantilism in action was the British East India Company, which held a tight grip on trade between Britain and India. Similar monopolistic practices were seen in the Spanish colonies, where only Spanish ships could carry goods to and from the New World, ensuring that wealth flowed back to Spain. These policies were more than administrative decisions. They were expressions of mercantilist ideology in its purest form. As we continue, let's delve deeper into how these practices altered global trade dynamics and fueled rivalries among emerging colonial powers. The impact of mercantilism went far beyond economics, setting the stage for global conflicts and reshaping entire societies. During the 16th century, mercantilism began to reshape global trade dynamics. Driven by the desire for precious metals and a favorable balance of trade, European powers embarked on ambitious colonial expansion. They established vast empires, staking claims across the Americas, Africa, and Asia. These territories became critical sources of raw materials, feeding the insatiable demand back home. 
As nations built their colonies, fierce economic rivalries emerged, fueling conflicts both at sea and on land. Navies clashed over trade routes, and nations imposed strict regulations to protect their mercantilist interests. This era of economic competition significantly altered global trade patterns, laying the groundwork for the interconnected world we know today. As we move forward, you'll see how critiques of mercantilism emerged, challenging its economic rationale and social impact. As we delve deeper into the history of mercantilism, it's important to examine the criticisms and conflicts it faced. Critics argue that mercantilist policies led to significant economic inefficiencies. By prioritizing the accumulation of gold and silver and restricting imports, economies often became unbalanced and squandered resources. Beyond economic concerns, social inequalities were another major criticism. Wealth became concentrated among the elite, while the wider populace often faced hardship and exploitation. This system exacerbated class divides, leading to social unrest and mounting tensions. Furthermore, new economic thinkers of the time, such as Adam Smith, began to champion ideas that starkly contrasted with mercantilist doctrines. Their opposition highlighted the inefficiencies and ethical issues inherent in mercantilism, laying the groundwork for more modern economic theories. As we reflect on these criticisms, we'll soon explore a comparative study between mercantilism and capitalism, shedding light on how economic thought evolved. This comparison will help us understand the distinct features that set these two theories apart. In our examination of economic theories, we now arrive at a key comparative study, mercantilism versus capitalism. Unlike mercantilism, which centered around accumulating gold and silver reserves and fostering a favorable balance of trade, Capitalism promotes economic freedom and embraces market-driven dynamics. At its core, capitalism allows market forces, supply and demand, to drive the economy without heavy governmental control. Mercantilism endorses strict regulation, with the state playing a dominant role to ensure a positive trade balance, often through trade monopolies and colonial exploitation. Conversely, capitalism champions limited governmental intervention, empowering private enterprise and fostering competition. Consider economic freedom. Mercantilism constrains it within nationalistic boundaries, while capitalism expands it, encouraging innovation and entrepreneurial ventures. This freedom allows individuals and businesses to operate with minimal restrictions, paving the way for economic diversity and growth. Market dynamics highlight another vital contrast. In mercantilist theory, markets are structured by government policies aimed at maintaining a surplus. In capitalism, market dynamics are organic, driven by the choices of producers and consumers alike. As we move forward, you'll see how these foundational differences impacted not only economic development, but also societal structures and global trade systems. As we delve into the legacy of mercantilism, we uncover its long-term effects that have rippled through centuries. The principles of mercantilism didn't fade away. Rather, they evolved, influencing modern economic policies and strategies. Government interventions to control trade and protect domestic industries are echoes of mercantilist thought seen in policies across the globe today. Mercantilism's historical significance is not to be understated. The mercantilist era forged the foundation of present-day global trade systems setting standards that would define economic interactions between nations. The aggressive pursuit of trade balances and colonial expansions under mercantilist doctrines helped shape the geopolitical landscape we recognize now. As we reflect on mercantilism, it's clear how its legacy weaves through the fabric of historical and modern economies alike. The trade dynamics and policies originating from mercantilism continue to impact how countries navigate the complex waters of international commerce. Stay tuned as we move forward to explore the contemporary relevance of these ancient economic ideas and how they manifest in today's globalized world. Though mercantilism might seem like an archaic concept from the 16th century, its principles continue to echo in the modern economic arena. Today, we see reflections of mercantilist thought in modern trade policies, which often prioritize national interests over global cooperation. Economic nationalism, another trait inherited from mercantilism, influences governments to protect and boost their domestic industries, sometimes at the expense of international relations. Furthermore, 
debates on globalization frequently highlight concerns reminiscent of mercantilist policies, such as the control of trade and the balance of power between nations. These echoes of mercantilism remind us that, despite the evolution of economic theories, some fundamental ideas persist and adapt to the contemporary context. Understanding mercantilism provides valuable insights into today's economic policies and global dynamics. In our next segment, experts will delve even further into the implications of mercantilist policies, offering both historical perspectives and future projections. As we draw closer to the end of our exploration into mercantilism, it's vital to seek the wisdom of experts in the field. Renowned economists and historians offer deep insights into the historical roots of mercantilist policies and their lasting impact on modern economies. From the accumulation of gold and silver to the imposition of trade monopolies, these policies have left an indelible mark on the global economic landscape. Experts highlight how mercantilism, despite its criticisms, influenced the very fabric of global trade and colonial policies. But what does the future hold? Drawing from decades of historical data and current economic trends, our experts predict significant ramifications for today's trade practices. They emphasize that understanding mercantilism helps in comprehending contemporary issues like economic nationalism and globalization debates. These perspectives not only enrich our understanding of the past, but also arm us with the knowledge to navigate future economic landscapes. As we move forward, embracing these lessons allows us to anticipate and adapt to the ever-evolving global market. Next, we will weave together these insights and bring our discussion to a meaningful conclusion with a comprehensive summary. As we reach the end of our journey through the landscape of mercantilism, it's essential to recap what we've explored. We've delved into the core principles that define the 16th century economic theory, emphasizing a positive trade balance and governmental control. We examined how these principles manifested in colonial policies and trade monopolies, reshaping global trade dynamics. We also confronted the criticisms, showcasing the economic inefficiencies and social inequalities that arose. By comparing mercantilism to capitalism, we highlighted its unique aspects and discussed its enduring legacy and continued relevance in today's economic policies. In summary, mercantilism played a crucial role in shaping economic policies and global trade. Its impact was profound, both in its time and through the centuries to follow. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of history and economics. Your curiosity drives our educational mission, so don't forget to subscribe for more content that dives deep into the world's pivotal theories and events. Until next time, keep questioning and learning.